Coming to you from the sanctuary, we welcome you all with us in service at this time. Whether you're going to be watching this Sunday morning or whether you'll be looking at it some other time during the week, we welcome you to this time of worship together. As we lift up the name of Jesus, as we've come together, thank you for allowing us to come into your homes. Thank you for you taking your time to view this and to be a part of this. And we encourage you as a family today, Lord, that, that you would just touch their hearts and their lives, Jesus. And Lord, that you would minister in homes tonight, Lord, and minister in homes as this is being watched, Lord, throughout the week and other times. And Lord, that you would minister unto lives, Jesus, that which they need from you. You know, Lord, if there's a home somewhere that has a need that they had not been able to meet, that somehow uh, that you would touch in their lives and their homes, and that they would know that you have met that need for them. And Lord, we're thankful to you tonight for the hope that you alone can bring us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen.
tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. And cleanse 
grace, oh God, that you provided upon us at an altar a prayer I met Jesus with compassion he welcomed me there and all my burdens so heavy were lifted when we met that altar of prayer. Well, at an altar of prayer, I met Jesus. With compassion, He welcomed me there. Yes, He did. And all my burdens, so heavy, were lifted. When we met, that altar of prayer. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, at an altar of prayer, I met Jesus. With compassion, He welcomed me there. And all my burdens, so heavy, were lifted. When we met, Lord Jesus, oh, the altar of prayer I met Jesus with compassion. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, I'm so thankful for your touch, Lord Jesus. All my burdens so heavy were lifted when we met at that altar. To Jesus, weary, worn, and sad. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And now His love has made my heart so glad because He took all my sins away. Oh, yes, He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And He keeps me singing every day. He took all my sins away. The load of sin was more than I could bear. He took them all away. He took them all away. 
And now on him I roll my every care Because he took my sins away Oh yes, he took my sins away He took my sins away And he keeps me singing every day I'm so glad he took my sins away Yes, he took my sins away No condemnation have I in my heart He took my sins away He took my sins away His perfect peace He did to me in part He took all my sins away Oh yes, He took my sins away He took my sins away And He keeps me singing every day I'm so glad He took my sins away He took all my sins away If you will come to Jesus Christ today He'll take your sins away He'll take your sins away And keep you happy in His love each day He'll take your sins away Oh yes, He'll take your sins away He'll take your sins away And keep you singing every day I'm so glad He took my sins away He took all our sins away Oh yes, He took our sins away He took our sins away And keep me singing every day I'm so glad He took our sins away He took our sins away hallelujah hallelujah and how great is our god how great is his name he's the greatest one forever the same he rolled back the water of the mighty red sea and he said i'm gonna oh yes put your trust in me how great is our God, how great is His name, He's the greatest one, forever the same. He rolled back the water of the mighty Red Sea, and He said, I'm going to lead you, so put your trust in me. How great is our God, how great is His name. He's the greatest one, forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And he said, I'm going to lead you, put your trust in me. Hey, man, I trust that you're enjoying worshiping along with us this evening. Right now, our youth director, Brother Brandon Karugu, is going to come and greet all of our youth and all the rest of you as well. I mean, he'll be followed by our speaker this evening, Brother Jonathan Howe. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Let me get myself ready for this. It'll all make sense in a little bit. Praise the Lord. In Latin, they have a saying that is carpe diem or seize the day. In many places in Africa, and famously on the Lion King, they have this other saying, Hakuna Matata, which means no worries. Around 2011, 2012, the kids had this saying, YOLO, which meant you only live once. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, Jesus had this saying. He says, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Jesus, as well as all these other sayings, had a very similar theme to them, and the theme was to live in today's moment. And in today's world, in today's world, we've all been given a moment, and I'm speaking specifically to the young people. I see one of the young people back there. We've all been given this moment here today. And so for a lot of us, we can be, we can choose to be paralyzed by the unknown that we don't know about tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen next week. I don't, and that can be a paralyzing thing. But Jesus told us not to worry about tomorrow, 
but to worry about today. So we've all been given this moment, and my question to all the young people, and then I guess to the rest of the congregation, but especially to the youth, is what are you doing to seize today? So a lot of the distractions of life have been kind of melted away. I have a friend named Kelly, and Kelly has this guitar, and she's decided that during this time of staying at home, she's going to learn to play the guitar. So she has this guitar, and she was telling me, I'm going to come out of this quarantine with a guitar, being able to play it, right? The other day, I was sitting at home during the work time, and then I had this idea that, you know what? I want to do something new. I'm going to start jogging. That's where this comes from. I'm going to start jogging. I'm just going to do something because I have this moment that I didn't have before. And so Kelly's brother, who plays the guitar, she told her, or he told her, that until you develop calluses on your hand, it's going to be painful to teach yourself to play the guitar. Just to start strumming, it's going to be painful. That's what her brother told her. And what my body's telling me today is that until I get into the shape of jogging, it's going to be a little sore the first few times. The reason I said those things is that we have this opportunity to create new things, to, to develop new spiritual habits and new spiritual activities that we didn't perhaps maybe think we had the time for before. So as, we, as the youth age, as you guys grow up, you're going to realize how important it is to develop a consistent prayer life, to develop a consistent Bible reading life. If there's not a better time than now when you don't have a lot of the other distractions to start developing that. And just like the calluses on your hands and just like the soreness of the body, it's going to be a little different, a little difficult at first when you start something new. But Jesus has given us this opportunity to develop new things. And so today, as I say farewell, seize the moment. Seize the season. This is our opportunity to grow like you haven't grown before. Caitlin and I are praying for you and we greet you all in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now, I kind of wondered how Brother Brandon saw some of my notes. Hallelujah. It is so good to be able to be here and be amongst you this morning. I know you're there and we're here, but together, we're together. Hallelujah. Back here, I think it was last week, I heard a commentator on the radio ask the question, if you could open any kind of business, just one business that you had the opportunity to open, what would it be? So I began to think about it for a few moments. I said, nah, it wouldn't be restaurants. We can go get some food and bring it home. I said, nah, not the ice rink. I wouldn't go there enough to make it worthwhile anyways. And as I thought about it, I said, you know what I'd open? I'd open the church because I am waiting. I can't wait to be able to be back together again and to have church together again. But until then, we've got this and we can still get into the presence of God. There is nothing that's keeping us or stopping us from being able to get into the presence of God. There's no quarantine that can stop us from getting into that. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this today. I was going to say this morning, but right now it's this evening. So I'll just try to say today. Second Chronicles chapter 16, reading verses 1 through 9 and 12 and 13 says that in the 36th year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, the king of Judah. Then Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, let there be a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So ben Hadin heeded King Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. They attacked Ijon, Dan, abel Maim and all the storage cities of Naphtali. Now it happened when Basha heard it that he stopped building Ramah and ceased his work. Then King Asa took all Judah, and they carried away the stones and timber of Ramah, 
which Baasha had used for building. And with them he built Geba in Mizpah. And at that time, Haniah the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Were the Ethiopians and the Libyan not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. And going to verse 12. And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet. And his malady was very severe. Yet in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa rested with his fathers. He died in the 41st year of his reign. I want to try to speak for the next few moments today on this thought. Searching to show himself strong. God is searching to show himself strong. Lord Jesus, we come before you today. And Lord, we ask that your anointing would be on this word today. Lord, let it be in every household and every home, Lord. Lord God, as it falls on the ears of each person that hears it, Lord, that your spirit would go forth and touch lives, Lord. Minister, Lord, to your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we read here about Asa, king of Judah, how he had taken and he had he was being faced by the Israelites and you know they had been separated. They had come into two different camps and they were no longer one nation. And Judah had been found themselves being kind of kept in by by the Israel and. And so they sent out to try to find some help. And that's where, that's where King Asa had made his first mistake. Because his first attempt was to go and try to seek out help from someone other than God. We read about how God had reminded him how the, um, he, the Egypt, the, um, the Ethiopians, I wanted to say the Egyptians, but I knew I was wrong. The Ethiopians... If you go into the chapter 15, you'll begin to, and you look at it, and I was, as I was studying this out some, and I looked into that chapter, and I began to realize that the Ethiopians had an army of almost a million people, roughly. And the, Israel, the Judah, Judah only had approximately 500,000 people. But yet when he went to God and said, God, I can't fight this on my own that God took before him. And he went with him into that battle and God delivered them into his hands. But for some reason, Asa forgot that God was someone that you could turn to. And he went and he looked to the the Syrians for some help. And he began to say to the Syrians, hey, come on, make a treaty with me. Break your treaty with them, I'll pay you more. He says, I need some help here because there's no way I can defeat the Israelites. There's just no way. And I don't, maybe Asa felt like they're God's chosen people as well. So how do I know if God's going to choose them instead of me? So he went to Syria for some help. And God came to him after. And, And yes, we see that Asa had success. He found victory for that moment. He, he won the battle, but yet he lost the war. Because while he may have won the battle and, and the, won in the moment, the Bible tells us that God said you have lost because now they, the Syrians have slipped from your hands. 
You see, Asa, you could have had more than just a victory over the Israels. You could have had a victory over Syria as well. But you failed to trust in me. You failed to trust and put your trust in me. And you've turned to somewhere else. You see, what, are you, what am I trying to say today? I'm trying to say that God wants to be a God of the moment. And he doesn't want to be the supplement to what's going on. He's not content to, to just fill a little part. He doesn't want to just step in and, and help just a little bit. He wants to be the one that comes in and says, I've got this all under control. I've got it. Don't worry about it. Just step back, stand back, and watch as I do what I can do. You see, God, in verse 9, the Bible tells us, he says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking to show himself strong. You see, God is searching and he's looking for something. He's looking for some sort of a problem. He's looking for some sort of a situation that he can say, ha, ah, here I've got something right here that I can show myself strong in. You know, oh, well, I'm, my problem it's a small problem. It's not all that big of a deal. So God probably wouldn't be too interested anyways. And after all, I think I can figure out how to take care of it on my own. You know what? Let me tell you something. God cares about the little things. And it may not seem big. And it may not seem like it's something that takes a lot of strength. But God delights in being able to step in and take care of something where we need it. I remember it was many years ago now that I was out here mowing the lawn one weekend. It was a Saturday afternoon and mowing the lawn, and, and, and the, gas, the, the lawnmower began to cough and sputter. And I knew what that meant. That meant I was running out of gas. But you see, I had a little bit of a problem because there was no more gas in the tank back in the shed. And no one was around to go get any more gas. And I didn't have the money, and I didn't have a license, and I had no way to go get gas. Cumberland's wasn't across the street at the time. And I had no way to get any gas. And, and so the only thing I could think of to do was I just said, in Jesus' name, keep running. Now, Brother Brandon, it was just some gas. I could have taken care of the problem myself. But I called on the name of the Lord instead. And that thing just started to purr like a kitten. And I finished mowing the lawn. And when I got all done, I took the cap off and it was dry as a bone. There wasn't even a vapor in that thing. You see, I could taken care of it myself, but God said, oh, I've got a situation that I can step into and I can take care of and I can show what I can do. Church, it doesn't matter how small it may seem. It, God can do something. He's looking for an opportunity to step in and say, I can take care of this for you. You don't need to do this on your own. You don't need to do part of it. I don't need a supplement plan because I can take care of it all on my own. See, Asa didn't learn his lesson either. The Bible says that he, he became ill in his feet. He became diseased. I don't know what kind of disease he had, but the Bible said it was very severe. That it was a horrible thing. It obviously was pretty severe because it ended up leading to his death. The Bible says that he turned not to the Lord, but he went and sought the physicians. And after he went and sought the physicians, and, and for obviously they couldn't, because the Bible says that in his, 40, in his 41st year of reign, that he, began, that he died. I was interested as I was listening to my Bible on audio the other day, and I heard these scriptures. Because as I was listening to it, it just said, but he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa rested with his father's. And I sat there and thought, wow, 
he missed out on an opportunity for the miraculous to happen because he sought the wisdom of someone else. He didn't seek the wisdom of God. He didn't go to God with his problems. Oh, how differently things could turn out sometimes if we would turn to God instead of the world for our options. You see, God is seeking after an opportunity to show himself strong, but we've got to be willing to trust in him. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, it tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, for it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. See, we don't need to trust in what our ways are. We've got to trust in His ways. His ways don't always make a lot of sense to us. His ways sometimes go even against what common knowledge and common sense would tell you to go. But yet he tells us if we will trust in him, he will lead us. He's not going to lead us astray. God is not sitting there waiting and saying, come on, trust me, and I'm going to lead you down the path of destruction. He's not sitting there going, come on, just trust in me and I'll I'll make sure that everything goes awry on you. Oh yes, sometimes when we follow him, it may seem like things are all falling apart and it may not seem like there's any sense to it, but that's not the time to give up a throw in the towel. That's the time to keep trusting in him because he's got a plan and he's got a way and he's going to bring you through to the end. I remember Brother Paul, how he used to say, Many times I heard him say it. God's, God's, if you're playing baseball with God and he's, he's pitching to you, his object is not to strike you out, but it's to get you home. He's not sitting there saying, oh, let me find a way to bring you through the roughest times in your life. But he's saying, let me find a way to show myself strong, to show that I can take you through and I can bring you through any moment. See, it doesn't always make sense to us. In 2 Kings, we see and we, we can hear the story about the woman that, his wife, that her, her husband had passed away and left a huge debt. And the creditors were going to come and they were going to take away his, her sons to, to become slaves and to pay off the debt. And so she goes to Elisha and she says, what shall I do? Tell me what can I do? See, I'm in a desperate situation I'm about to lose my two sons because I can't pay off the debt that is owed. And Elisha says, man, well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what you should do. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Man, I don't have anything. If I had something, then I could give it. I could, I could do something, but I've got nothing right now. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. I do have one jar of oil, but that's nothing. What am I supposed to do with a jar of oil? I kind of can imagine maybe Elisha goes, oh good, we've got something to work with now. Go ahead, go borrow a bunch of vessels. Go borrow all that you can get. Make sure they're empty. And when you them all, bring them into the house, you shut the door and start to pour the oil out. And this doesn't make any sense. Well, you know what? You've got an option then. You can either take what you've heard, you can take the Word of God and you can apply it, or you can say this sounds like a bunch of nonsense and you can go try to figure it out on your own. But let me tell you what happened to that woman. She took it and she poured and she filled every vessel. And when they were full, she said, here's some more, give me some more. And they said, we've got all we can get. So she went back to Elisha and said, they're all full, what should I do? And Elisha said, go and sell it. And take it and pay off your debt. But this is what I find amazing. Is that God didn't just do enough to just pay off the debt. But he said, then you and your sons live off off of the remainder of it. 
You see, God doesn't do something just partially. He, no, he's, he's not doing something in just a supplemental plan. But he says, ah, I've got a reason. I've got a way. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to completely do it. And I'm going to not just take care of your credit, but I'm going to take care of you beyond it. Why? Because they trusted in the Lord. You know, we can find ourselves sometimes in places and, and we can feel God lead us and direct us and it may not seem like there's any sense to it. But we need to learn to trust in Him. Jesus and the disciples got on a boat. He said, let's go to the other side. And in the, on the way, they found themselves in the midst of a storm. The winds and the seas were blowing every which way that they could see. They were in fear of their lives, and they didn't know what to do. And then someone got the bright idea, hey, why don't we just go wake Jesus up and see what he wants to do? You know, Jesus was sleeping in the middle of the storm. I say, how in the world can he be sleeping? When they're sitting there worried that their end is about to come. They're worried that they're going to go down with the ship and they're never going to see anyone again. They think that this is the end. But then they go and wake Jesus up. Jesus says, what are you scared for? He stepped out on the bow and he said, peace, be still. And immediately the seas and the wind calmed. You see, sometimes we have to find ourselves in the middle of our greatest storm, in the middle of our darkest night, in the middle of our worst tribulation, in order for us to be able to see God revealed to us the way he wants us to see him. Jesus had been walking with them. They had, they had been around Jesus. They had seen the miracles. They had heard his teachings. But yet they did not come to a recognition that Jesus was God until they were in the middle of the storm and he stepped out and said, Peace, be still. You see, we can be facing the middle of our biggest storms. We might feel like we've been pushed into the corner and we, we have no way out. We may feel like we're at wit's end and there's nowhere to turn any longer. But I'm here to tell you today that there is somewhere you can turn, and that is to Jesus. Because Jesus is still the hope of our world. Because Jesus still holds our answers. You see, it doesn't matter what you're up against. It may be a whole lot more than just an empty gas tank that you can't seem to fill it may be up against something where you see and you feel like it's absolutely no possible way. You may feel like you have nothing but a problem. But I want you to know today that God has nothing but a solution. Because your problem is not greater than his solution. And you may feel like you have nothing, but nothing in the hands of God is the bare essentials for everything. You see, God is seeking today for an opportunity to show himself great. He's looking and he's searching. His eyes are going to and fro, saying, is there somewhere is there somewhere? Is there someone? Is there something that I can do? I've got an itch. I want to do something for my people. I want to do something great. I want to show that I can still do mighty things because I'm still the same as what I was in the beginning. I'll be the same tomorrow, but my power hasn't changed and I'm looking for an option and an opportunity to be able to minister and give victory. You see, in order for you to receive that victory, you've got to be willing to put it into his hands. You've got to be willing to put your trust in him and give him your problem. Today, as I bring this to a close, as I wrap this up, what is it that you have? What is it that you're in need of from God today? 
Yes, I know this isn't church like normal. I understand that, that we are having church today through YouTube and other, every other situation. And we may be sitting here saying the church is in a dark hour. The church is facing stuff it's never faced before. But I'm here today to tell someone that we're not in our darkest hour, but we're in the brightest moment ever because God is getting ready to show himself strong like never before. So this morning, today, as you're with me and as you're watching, as the presence of God is in this place, yes, even in your home, Will you take these few moments to seek the face of God? Perhaps you've been sitting there thinking, yeah, but that verse, it said, for those who have been loyal in their heart to God. And maybe you're sitting here thinking, no, I, I really haven't been all that loyal to God. I've made too many mistakes. I've fallen short. I really haven't served God the way that I should have. I've fallen too short. I'm too far away from God. There's no way God would want to do anything for me. But God's looking to show himself strong to you because his grace and his mercy, it will reach where you are. There's nothing stronger, there's nothing greater God could do than to reach into your life and pull you out of the sin you find yourself in and set your feet on a solid rock. Yes, you're not too far, your problem's not too great, nor is it too small. Will you give it to the Lord today? Will you give Him your problems Will you give him your life? Hallelujah, Jesus. message hope has a name not just hope to get through this current crisis and the pandemic and have everything be back to normal we're talking about a hope today that's more important than all of that as important as it is to get everything going again but yet in your personal life today Jesus wants to bring hope to you not just more money in the bank account but maybe you've struggled with things in your life. Maybe there's things in your life you've tried to get rid of, but you haven't been able to. I want you to know today that Jesus brings that hope to you as has been articulated to you this evening. And so right there in your home, after we've signed off of this broadcast, 
in your home, you can reach out to Jesus. You can tell him what you have need of. You can tell him not just your needs of this life, and if you have needs today and that you need absolutely met, you can tell Jesus about that, and he will hear your prayer. But there's something else in your life that you desire to have him touch, to bring salvation to your life, maybe to free you of some bondages and chains of addictions that you have. Jesus is the one that brings hope to you. Hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. Thank you for being with us today, but let your faith in Jesus reach to new and higher heights today. Amen. So as we bring this service to a close again, if it were a Sunday morning at the sanctuary, we would allow people to bring of their tithes and offerings. So we invite you to give tonight through our website and there's give buttons and you can push one of those and give an offering and help with the cost of operation that continues during this time. And we would appreciate you doing that this evening. But then we would say, have a cup of coffee and a munchkin. Well, we can't do that tonight. You can in your homes, but we just can't do it here. The coffee station is closed. The munchkins are not here. And so you, you, when everything is open again, well, we'll welcome you all back, and we'll have a cup of coffee and a munchkin together. But I'm thinking that's probably a, a few weeks off from what I'm hearing. And God bless you today. Thank you for listening. Drop us a line, send us an email, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, and uh, get notifications when we put up something new, and, and uh, just in, in, enjoy your family time together. I know our lives and our schedules have been disrupted. Make it work to the best that you can for you. God bless you today. Amen. Until the next time, may Jesus be a greater part of your life. Amen.